There is an endless list as to why you may not be getting stronger. However, when you boil down all the different reasons, there's only three things that are within your direct control. And in today's video, I'm gonna tell you why you've plateaued and then also how to break it. The first is pretty obvious. It's literally just the size of your muscles, how big your muscles are. Mike Isratel recently made an Instagram post that summed this up very easily, but how fast a car can go is directly dependent on how big the engine is. If you've got large muscles, it means that you can create more force and lift more weights. So if you're feeling like you may have hit a strength plateau, maybe it's time to move towards some hypertrophy work in order to grow your muscles and increase your strength. The second is your skill of movement. And ultimately, this is a huge factor, especially if you're a beginner or intermediate lifter. How well you lift the bar and your technique and your execution matters for high performance and high load strength training. However, there is a caveat to skill, and that is that everybody has a ceiling of how efficient they can become. You can't consistently be trying to improve your technique. At some point, you have to get rid of the idea of perfection and actually just start to push high loads under fatigue for a long period of time. The third factor is your neuromuscular efficiency. Fancy word, very science. All it is, is how good your brain and your nervous system is at contracting your muscles. So if we go back to the first point, which is muscle size, you could see a bodybuilder who has huge muscles, swole, shirt ripping. However, you go and watch them lift and they're actually not that strong. They have a lot of muscle, but their brain and their nervous system isn't great at contracting all of that muscle under high loads. And neuromuscular efficiency within training can really just be boiled down to one or two key things. The first is your intent. When you push a load, you can lift it slowly, or you can place a large amount of intent on the barbell and lift it very quickly. And it's a little bit of a trick that you can create within your nervous system to push higher loads. And that is simply just having the attitude that I'm gonna lift this thing as fast and as hard as I can. Secondly, with neuromuscular efficiency, we're looking at how well the brain can coordinate opposing muscles. And this kind of just boils back down to the skill. If you're improving your skill and improving your technique, your neuromuscular efficiency should be improving anyway. And ultimately, if you feel like you hit a strength plateau, that is all that's in your control. The size of your muscles, the skill of the movement, and how well the brain can coordinate the muscles to complete the task. All that information is great, but what can we actually do about it in the gym? Here's some simple things that you can do and look at with your programming and your training in order to break your strength plateau. The first is that you're following a good program. And there's a few key things around this. What is a good program? Well, it's very contextual. However, my belief and our belief here at Strength Culture is that your program should be somewhat static. And the reason that is, is because you are the variable in the program and you are the thing that should be progressing. Your strength, your load on the bar is telling you whether or not you're progressing. If your rep ranges are undulating and your sets are increasing and decreasing every week, it makes it very difficult for you to determine whether or not you're actually getting stronger. It can kind of just be this pseudo strength as a result of reducing volume or reducing rep ranges. So the first thing is, is follow a well-structured program and leave the variables static. Don't go changing them week to week. Let your bar weight be the variable in the program. An easy way for you to maybe restructure your program is also thinking about how and where in the week you're prioritizing your main lifts. One simple framework that I use here with our clients at Strength Culture is the understanding of different exposures within your training week. We have three main exposures that we look to program. The first is your typical high effort strength exposure. This is the standard strength training that you're going to do. This is where your loads are high, your effort is high, and your technique expression is not the main focus. The second exposure would be something that's more skill-based. Generally, we like to program tempo versions of your main lift. So if you're a low bar squatter looking to increase your low bar strength, your strength exposure will just be standard low bar. Your technique exposure would be a tempo variation, maybe a three second down, so that you can actually control and feel the things that you're looking to improve your technique towards. Your third exposure is going to be something that's volume focused. When we think about volume and building muscle, what we're trying to do is increase the range of motion, 
slow it down enough so that we can control and minimize things like momentum and form breakdown and actually target the muscles under load, under tension. And within those three exposures within your training week, you'll see that we're ticking the box of improving your skill with the tempo day, improving your force production with the strength day and improving your muscle size with that volume day. And if you think about your main lifts and the ones that you want to improve, that is how I would recommend scattering those exposures throughout the week. The next easiest place to restructure your training program is within that strength exposure. And what I would recommend doing is utilizing top sets. The reason that we use a top set, maybe a top single or a top triple followed by some back offs, is so that your first set, your first real effort of the session is without fatigue. Now this obviously comes with the caveat that your warm up sets become really important for that top set performance. You don't have a bunch of sets leading up to that top load for the day because it's front loaded at the start of your session. The second part to this, and another great reason why I'd recommend using top sets, is because the back off work comes after the top set. And the back off work is ultimately what drives fatigue and actually creates the strength response or the adaptation from your training. Now that we've recapped the strength exposures and your overall programming structure, let's talk about volume, because volume and hypertrophy work is important because the size of the muscle dictates how much force it can produce. The single most important factor for or hypertrophy as an outcome and muscle size is how close you are to failure. There'll be all this science and stuff that rolls around talking about how volume is the adaptation driver for hypertrophy, which in the science, in an isolated world, it makes sense. The more work you do, the more tension you create, you're going to see a greater adaptation. However, after being a coach for 12 years, it is not the most important thing for hypertrophy and where most people go wrong. Where most people are going wrong is they simply don't train hard enough. They are too far away from failure and their RPEs are nowhere near enough accurate to actually cause a hypertrophy adaptation from their training. What I would recommend doing is with your accessory lifts, things like your isolated movements, your machine work, is actually pushing some of your sets throughout the week to complete failure. Challenge yourself to do drop sets and restructure your effort and your ability in the gym so that you can actually push your training harder. It becomes quite relieving to realize how much more effort you could be giving to your strength work. Make sure you're pushing hard. Don't be afraid to use AMRAPs. And I'll be honest, if you can nail these two main areas of your programming structure and your exposures, but then also your effort and attitude towards training and the hypertrophy stimulus, you're probably gonna be well on your way to actually seeing new strength gains. However, if you wanna take this a step further, there's a couple of other things that I'd recommend looking into. The first is actually just putting yourself in an environment with other people that are already doing the thing. They're already strong. If you're looking to get good at powerlifting, you're best to join a powerlifting community or a powerlifting gym. You'll be surprised at how accelerated your gains become. The second part to that is actually setting yourself a testing day. There's no point just walking in the gym and seeing where you're at and being disappointed if you didn't hit a new PR. You're better off setting like a 10, 12 or 16 week period in advance, planning your training, planning the structure and working towards that end date. If you piece all of these things together, there is no reason why you shouldn't be breaking your strength plateau. I see it all the time here at Strength Culture with thousands of lifters over the years. There more than likely is just a couple of small, low-hanging fruit changes that need to happen to your programming, your attitude, and your effort, and we'll see your new gains. If you enjoyed this video, you got any questions, drop them down below. Otherwise, subscribe. We'll see you next time.